Well, today we're at Cheltenham for the uh, brass band finals. Been coming here for, well, oh, I think this is about my eighth time. So it's really nice to see old, old friends. It uh, always seems to be the same people. Nice to catch up. Very early today, we were here at seven o'clock. Unfortunately, we couldn't get in yesterday afternoon, but uh, hey, we made it anyway, so. Yes, <laughs> didn't, didn't, didn't really have a very good night in the hotel last night. The uh, air conditioning wasn't working. We opened the window to let the air in, but right outside the hotel in the road, there was a manhole cover. And every time anything went over it, it just sort of uh, made an almighty noise. Till about one o'clock this morning. I mean, obviously, this is just a very, very small section of our range. A lot of the instruments, people in these bands, competition bands, wouldn't play. Uh, there's no need for them. So these are the instruments that they play. Hopefully, you know, they might, might be interested in. If they've seen one here, then maybe they'll order one on the internet. I'm here today to conduct Hitchin Band in the first section and it's the national finals. We won our area so we're delighted to be here playing Philip Harper's piece. Just having some fun looking around the trade stands and of course coming and speaking to everyone at Wessex. Hitchin play in the London Southern Counties area. I've been conducting the band for around about a year now. They're a really, really fun bunch and the band has had the same members mostly since they've been a third section band. They work incredibly hard and uh, we also have a bit of a laugh while we're doing it. Hopefully uh, great musical results, but also a lovely sociable bunch of people. It's not very often we do go in and watch the bands, to be honest. But unfortunately, most of the time we are quite busy. I will try. I mean, there's enough of us here today. Uh, there's normally only either myself or two people normally, but today there's four of us, so who knows? Yeah, we've got the Jimbasa. Yeah. Uh, well, apart from the fact we'd actually got one in stock, which is quite unusual, it's always nice to have a crowd grabber, really. Having something unusual draws people over to the stand. So we've got our Jimbasso, which is probably our largest instrument, next to our smallest instrument, the um, piccolo trombone. It's always nice to see other people up here, other exhibitors. For the last few years, we've been next to Bandsman Gin, which is a terrible place to be. They keep bringing over samples and people wonder why we're sort of wobbling around a bit. <laughs> so my name's James and I'm the head distiller for uh, the Gentleman Distillers and we make the Bandsman Gin range, as you can see here. My wife and I are both uh, brass banders, both for a number of years. Wanted to make something and say, this is our own, this is something we've made, and decided gin might be a good thing. It was very popular at the time. And we thought, why not make a gin dedicated to brass bands and bandsmen? And so from there, we started with our bandsman gin, the very first one. And then from there, we released more and more gins, including a, a bandmaster, which we thought was the obvious progression from bandsmen. And then from there, we launched a pink gin as a very summery thing. 
a uh, carolers reserve which is our Sloan Dams and the Cure and then a few other smaller releases commemorating musical events. This one was for the army, Nella Hall which is where the army trains its musicians and then all of our miniatures, gift packs and it just snowballed from there. It's really nice to be here and actually meet people who try the gins, especially musicians who come to us for the name and stay with us because of the taste. So uh, I'm an E-flat bass player and I've always really admired the Wessex instruments and I'm hoping to um, get my hands on one in the next year or so. But I'm very looking forward to having a Wessex to call my own at some point. If you're interested in learning more about what we do, the best thing is just to Google Bandsman Gin or the Gentleman Distillers and look on our website. Uh, we're on Facebook and Instagram at Bandsman Gin. Uh, we post all across the UK and if you're in Lincoln or the surrounding area, we do do free delivery as well or you can pop into our distillery and pick up a bottle yourself. No, it's great. It's nice to see them. Lovely, lovely couple and they've got a great product. And also on the other side we've got a colleague from Mercer and Baker and we are trying to tie up with them to supply their mouthpieces or at least offer their mouthpieces with uh, our instrument. I'm Carl Mercer, one of the owners of Mercer & Barker. We manufacture and sell mouthpieces for brass musical instruments. Yeah, we've been in business for uh, just over three and a half years. There's a full range for all instruments, available in different finishes. These are stainless steel ones, then you've got some with gold accents. You've got your standard uh, bright silver plate ones. The sound quality doesn't change too much between the different metals, it's more of the feel on your face. So gold's got a softer feel than silver's got, as has stainless steel, but one of the benefits of stainless steel is if anybody suffers with allergies, that fixes the problem because it's made of medical grade stainless steel. Yeah, we had a young kid that came down to try some mouthpieces and he came with a red ring on his face. And within five, 10 minutes of trying one of our stainless steel mouthpieces, it was gone, his problem was fixed. It was like, yeah, it was really, really good. Some people just like, the, like them because they they're just going to last forever. Not, you're not going to have silver plate or gold plate wearing off. I met Jonathan many, many years ago. I had, an, I had an instrument that he wanted to borrow, and that was sort of the introduction. Over the years, I've done a bit of selling through Essex as an agent for sort of in the north of England, and attended different trade events with them and, and supported them on their trade stand. So there is quite a, quite a connection there. Certainly Steve from Wessex has become like a personal friend. Some people buy a mouthpiece just on appearance, but the majority need to try them out. Not just for five minutes, so we give them the opportunity to take them home, try them, and if it's not for them, or they want to exchange it for a different size, they've got 14 days in which to do that, and if it's returned in perfect condition, they'll get a full refund. Yeah, it's gone, it's gone a bit quiet, quiet at the moment. The bands seem to come through in waves. Uh, they won't very often come round and look at the instruments or even think about playing another instrument until they've, they've actually played. And then they'll come round and have a look. It will get very busy here at lunchtime when the bar opens and in the evening, very often you can't move. There'll be so many people up here. But that's when you've got to start watching the instruments because when people have had a few drinks, tend to be even wobblier, wobblier than me after a couple of samples of the gin. You've got to be a bit careful. So I'm here this weekend just to help out Wessex. I'm an instrument tech, so any technical questions I can answer. But um, I'm a sax player in a brass band world, so awkward. <laughs> Someone brought their old Wessex instrument to us. It had been up a mountain and it had been sat on and one of the valves was just sticking. It just needed taken out, cleaning and putting back in. It's a rotary valve so it's not that accessible to do as, as a piston valve would be. So I just took a look at it for them and fixed it straight away. They were competing but they weren't using that instrument. But it's nice to see these instruments coming back and hearing nice things about them. Working in the warehouse, you don't get any feedback from people. You just fix the instruments, send them out and then away they go. Here you get to talk to people, see what they like, what they don't like, and then we can change anything if needs be. Okay, so that's it from the Cheltenham Brass Band Finals for uh, another year. Get to pack up all the instruments and go home. A lot of interest, which is what we uh, always like, and I'm sure we'll, uh, we'll get a few sales from it over the next few weeks. Yeah, lots and lots of interest.
But this is always the best bit, packing down and going home. <laughs> All those years of playing Tetris on the old Game Boy in the 90s. Came handy, didn't it? Success? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's it. I don't know how he wants these packed. I'm just going to chuck him there and then he can deal with it. Every little space is used up. That went very well, I think. Yeah, I think it went well. Good networking and yeah. stuff. And That's what it's all about. Very good lunch. Very good meal last night. It was lovely. Well, thanks for watching and we'll see you here again in Cheltenham in 12 months' time. And next month for a different vlog. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hang on, they've got to see whether it shuts. <laughs>